Hey guys, it's Lexi, and in this video on alkene reactions, we're going to be talking about halogenation. Okay, so here we have a halogenation reaction, and the way that we know that this is halogenation is because we have a double bond, or an alkene, and we're reacting it with Br2 within an aprotic solvent. And so remember, it doesn't have to be our Br2, we could also use Cl2 instead, but the important thing to hone in on is that solvent. So you guys see the carbon tetrachloride, the CCL4. So CCL4 is an example of an aprotic solvent. And that's important because that helps confirm that we're doing a halogenation reaction. If instead we were using a protic solvent, such as water or methanol, we would be looking at an entirely different reaction. We would instead be looking at halohydrin formation. So another common example of an aprotic solvent that you'll see with halogenation is CH2Cl2. So I would really make sure that you know these two that I put a star next to as being your examples for aprotic solvents for halogenation. So keeping all of that in mind, um, we can go ahead and move on with this reaction. And when you're doing this mechanism for halogenation, the first step is to start with your nucleophile. So the nucleophile is going to be the alkene, and it is going to attack one of the bromines. And then the bond between the two bromine atoms is going to break, and those electrons will go to the other bromine. So what are we going to get? We're going to draw out the new bromine that has added on. So one of the bromines, notably this guy, is going to add on to either this carbon or this carbon. And I'm going to put him here at the end. And the reason he's going to go at the end is because that is the less substituted position. Another way of thinking about it is it's the carbon with more hydrogens. So we're going to add the bromine, the first one, to the less substituted position. And in this case, I'm just going to go ahead and put him on a wedge, and I'll kind of explain that in a minute. It really doesn't matter if you want to put your first bromine on a dash or on a wedge, because remember, a double bond is flat. The geometry of a double bond is flat sp2, so it's trigonal planar, meaning the first bromine can either add on a wedge or a dash. It really doesn't matter. So I'm going to put him on a wedge. So if you remember from hydrohalogenation, if you watch that video, the next thing that we did was add a carbocation. So you might be thinking that we're going to have a secondary carbocation here. But the reality is the bromine that added on has some lone pairs. And so rather than forming a full-blown positive sign, the bromine is going to donate a little bit of electron density to the carbon atom. So that carbon is no longer fully deficient. And instead of having a full positive sign, it's going to have a partial positive sign. So we're going to go ahead and draw that partial positive on the carbon. And why is that so important? It has to do with the fact that, unlike a carbocation, the partial positive cannot rearrange. So that means there are no carbocation rearrangements here. And that simply has to do with the fact that there are no carbocations here. So we can't have a rearrangement. And so what we want to do next is consider the nucleophilic attack, since we don't have to check for any rearrangements like we did for hydrohalogenation. So that second bromine that was just kind of the leaving group over here, he's going to come back. So he left and now he's coming back. He's floating around and he is going to act as our nucleophile. So he's got eight electrons around him and a full negative charge. And he will attack the partial positive sign. But the question has to do with stereochemistry. Is he going to attack from the top face or from the bottom face? Well, if you look at the top face right now, there's this big bromine right at the top. So you can see him here. He's right on the top. So if the second bromine wanted to attack at the top, it would be very difficult. So instead, he's going to go and attack from the back face. So he's going to go from behind to attack on a dash. So when we draw our product here, the first bromine added on a wedge, and then the second bromine is going to add on on a dash. 
And that is known, that relationship is known as anti. So we get this anti-stereochemistry. And as a hint to you guys, that is always going to happen when you have a cyclic intermediate. So do you guys see how this kind of looks like a little triangle here? That is known as a cyclic intermediate. So when you have the cyclic intermediate, you are going to end up having this anti-stereochemistry. So the first bromine added on a wedge, but it really didn't have to. We could have added the first bromine on a dash instead. And had we have added the first bromine on a dash, then the second one would have added on a wedge because then the back face would have been very crowded. So the, the green bromine would have had to come in on the front face on a wedge. So we still have that anti-stereochemistry. What we want to consider then is what is the relationship between our two products? What we want to check, is there a chiral center? And there is, right? We have one chiral center here. Remember, this is not a chiral center because you have two hydrogens there. And a chiral center is a carbon with four distinct groups bonded to a tetrahedral carbon. So the one that has this little red arrow would not be considered a chiral center because it has two of the same groups, notably the hydrogens. So we have one chiral center, and then here it is again, the chiral center. And so the relationship here is these two molecules are enantiomers of each other. So we're going to form 50% of the R enantiomer and 50% of the S enantiomer. So we get 50% R and 50% S. That is known as what? Exactly. That's known as a racemic mixture when you get 50% of both enantiomers. And that's what we're going to do here. One thing I want to point out before we move on to the next question is I want you guys to consider another way that this intermediate might be shown, this intermediate right here. So this is actually known as a brominium ion. And so the way that it's most commonly shown is going to be a little bit different. They're not going to show that partial positive sign, but instead what you'll oftentimes see is the bromine having the full positive sign. And the name of this is a brominium ion. The reason I don't like to show it to you guys like this is because it's a little bit more difficult then to explain why does the second bromine attack the left side as opposed to the right side if they look identical. And so that's why for explanation purposes, I don't show it like that. But I want you guys to be aware of this brominium ion were it to show up on one of your exams. Here we've got another example of halogenation. Feel free to pause the video so then you can check your work. Okay, so the first step here is we're going to confirm that we are indeed dealing with halogenation. So we've got an alkene, we're reacting it with Cl2, and then we're going to confirm that we have an aprotic solvent. And we do, we've got the CH2, Cl2. The first step is the double bond is going to attack one of the chlorines, and then the bond between them will break and go to the second chlorine. Now we are going to add our chlorine. In this case, you may notice that they are equally substituted, so it doesn't really matter to which side you want to add the first chlorine. So I'm going to go ahead and put it on the top, and I'll put it on a wedge. So this is my first chlorine. And remember the chlorine, unlike hydrogen from hydrohalogenation, is going to be able to donate a little bit of its electron density to this carbon so that we've got a partial positive sign on the carbon. Then we don't have to check for rearrangements. Remember, you're not going to have any rearrangements of a partial positive sign. So the second chlorine is going to come in with its eight electrons and full negative sign, and it is going to attack the carbon of the partial positive sign. So it will attack that carbon, and then the chlorine is going to get all of its electrons back. And remember, the second chlorine that attacks, so we have the first one, right, that added on, and then we have the second one. And that second one is going to have to come from behind. So a wedge means that something is sticking out toward you. So that yellow chlorine is coming out of the screen toward you. 
So that means that the green chlorine is not going to want to come from the top of the screen. He's going to want to come from behind the back of your screen so that there's a lot more space and less crowding. So what that amounts to is the first chlorine adds on a wedge, and that means that the second one is going to add on on a dash. But there was really no reason that that first chlorine added on a wedge. It could have also added on a dash. So we also need to show the other product we could have gotten, which is if the first chlorine added on a dash, that would mean that the back face would have been crowded. So now the second chlorine is going to end up adding on a wedge. So these would be your two products. In this case, we have two chiral centers. We have a chiral center here and here, which correspond to these two chiral centers. And so the relationship between these two molecules, we always want to double check if there are two chiral centers to make sure the molecule is not meso. So we're going to check, do we see a plane of symmetry? And we do not. So we can confirm that these are indeed chiral molecules. And that would mean the relationship is they are enantiomers. So we have our two enantiomers. We get 50% of the R and 50% of the S. In this case, because there are two chiral centers, we could get 50% RS, for example, and 50% SR. But the point is we get 50% of both enantiomers, which is known as a racemic mixture. So we've got our racemic mixture here as our products. And then just as a reminder, on an exam, the way that the intermediate might show up is going to be as a chlorinium ion. So a chlorinium ion is going to look like this, with a full positive on the chlorine. Remember before we called it a brominium ion? That was because we were dealing with a bromine atom. In this case, we're going to be talking about the chlorinium ion as our cyclic intermediate. Remember that little triangular look. And because of that cyclic intermediate, that is the reason that we have anti-stereochemistry. So anti referring to one chlorine is adding on a wedge and the other one on a dash. One on a dash and the other on a wedge. So anytime you have a cyclic intermediate like we have here, you are going to have anti-stereochemistry. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and also hit the notification bell so that you can stay up to date when I upload new videos.